All right, guys, welcome back to U.S. History. We're uh, going to look forward to a time period called territorial expansion here. Um, now looking at the map in the beginning, you can see, you know, the original 13 colonies. And then this was America, this, all this green by 1783 at the end of the American Revolution. And then gradually we began to get a little bigger and add little pieces to create the map of what it looks like to be America today. So as we begin this uh, little sideshow of territorial expansion, follow the worksheet I gave you. And you, you'll get the story behind each one of these little colors here. Maybe at the end you can complete the map so you, you know specifically how, uh, how America grew. So here we go. Uh, the one term that you really want to be aware of in this uh, aspect is manifest destiny, all right? Many Americans believed in manifest destiny by the 1830s, 1840s. It is interesting for us to note some of the positives and negatives in terms of getting larger as, as a nation. So uh, we'll start with the good stuff here. I got two positives, two negatives for you. Um, the, the positive to, to expand to the Pacific Ocean and even possess the entire northern continent made Americans feel pretty good. It felt like something that we should be doing. I mean, who doesn't like getting uh, you know, bigger as a nation? I mean, you feel like you're growing, and growth is always good. There are some negatives to that, but for the most part, people liked it. Uh, the other thing was is that as we got bigger, we could spread the ideals of freedom, of our democracy, to other places that, that really didn't have it. So that's our kind of motifs when it comes to positives for Manifest Destiny. And looking at the negatives, well, there's a bunch of people who are already living there. So we have Native Americans and Mexican peoples who were living there. They viewed that quite differently from, from our positives. Obviously, we were encroaching on their territories. And expansion may raise some serious questions about the extent of slavery. Should we have it or should we not have it in these new territories? And that will ultimately lead us to the Civil War. All right. So as we begin to expand here, this is a famous, famous uh, painting by John Gast. I love it. The title of it is called The American Progress when you look at it, and it's pretty good. You have the angelic figure here moving westward, the manifest destiny. It's kind of godly. It's coming from God. She is carrying with her, by the way, a very nice telegraph line so we can communicate. She's got the holy book in front of her, so it's kind of telling you God's making us move west. Over here would be the the East Coast. Notice how the artist had shaded this very lightly with the sun and over here it's kind of dark because we, we're not quite sure what's there yet but we're going to be going. How are we getting there? This guy may be symbolizing maybe the Pony Express. You had your Conestoga wagon, maybe a pioneer moving from moving westward. You have a stagecoach, maybe a richer guy moving, and we eventually developed trains and railroad routes for us to travel westward, okay? These are probably some backwoods pioneers carving their way through the Appalachian Mountains. And then, obviously, who's in the way? The Native Americans are running for their lives, and they are running westward. Even the wildlife is running. You have this little bear here. So it's a great painting, kind of outlining manifest destiny. Paints it in kind of a great light for us. Not so much for the Native Americans and then later on the, the Mexican Americans. So you get a feel for that as we go through. If you needed the uh, definition of Manifest Destiny, we provided it for you. You can copy it down and, and put it on the sheet. Okay, so we're going to meet some people and look at Westward Expansion. Not too bad. You have some early explorers like Meriwether Lewis and William Clark and Zebulon Pike, who Thomas Jefferson sent to explore the West. All right, there was also some naturalists and, and trappers for furs and missionaries who went there early on to see what the West was like and to do their thing. All right. A group of people we call the trailblazers or the settlers. These are people who traveled west following multiple trails, the Santa Fe Trail and the Oregon Trail, to head west to start new lives. All right? There is a religious group known as the Mormons. They start out in New York. They end up over in Illinois. They get kicked out. Their leader, Brigham Young, settled at the Great Salt Lake in 1846 over in Utah. So there are a lot of Mormons living in Utah. All right. And then you got your gold seekers, right? Your, your prospectors or your miners. They're looking for natural resources, gold and silver, and they would also contribute to westward migration. So when you look at it, you got a whole bunch of different people traveling west in the 1830s, 40s, 50s, and so on. So that's what you have going on out west. All right. I show you this just to give you an idea of the two routes taken by the early explorers from uh, Thomas Jefferson. He sent Lewis and 
Clayton Clark. They made their way up the Missouri River, all the way up to the Columbia River, and they made it to uh, Fort Clatsop, and they made it to the Pacific, and then they came back, and they came back with a boatload of information. Jefferson also sends Zebulon Pike to explore the southern portion of the Louisiana Territory here. He also comes back with information. And if you're looking at the orange, that's 1803. That is the Louisiana Purchase. So you can really get a lot of information when studying and looking at these maps. All right. Uh, the other two that we looked at were the Oregon Trail. So they left uh, Independence over here, so Missouri, and they cruised up this little green line known as the Oregon Trail. They made it all the way to Portland, Oregon. Notice the Portland uh, team, I believe the basketball team, is the Portland Trail Blazers, right? This blue line here from Illinois is the Mormon Trail. They got kicked out and they went to the Great Salt Lake. Uh, one little spinoff from the Oregon Trail is the California Trail, and that got you to California. Then you had this nice Santa Fe Trail that we used, and then eventually the Spanish Trail that got you down to L.A. So we had a lot of trails happening in the early 1800s, and these trails are going to be able from the east to the west. You got it. Manifest destiny. When you say it, you remember it, right? Uh, so if you don't know who the Mormons are, we left that for you so you can have that. That little nice little uh, group of people. Now, we're going to trace the land that we acquired between 1783 to 1853. And by 1853, the continental U.S. expanded to its present boundaries. So it really looked like it looks today. Okay, this was the original 13 colonies and eventually what we had after the, the American Revolution. And we began to add these little pieces, the uh, this brown piece, these purple pieces, Texas annexation. And we ended up getting all these little pieces. We need to know how. We're going to take you through that. First one was easy, right? It's the Louisiana Purchase, 1803. Territory was acquired from the French for $15 million by T.J., Thomas Jefferson. Why? We needed to gain control of the Mississippi River, especially the mouth of the Mississippi, and that will be uh, down in Louisiana, all right? So when you just look at the Louisiana Purchase, we got all this land for $15 million, but the only reason why we bought it was to control this little port right here, the mouth of the Mississippi. You control what goes in and what comes out, and that's why Jefferson bought it, and we did it, and we got it. So uh, this red line, once again, is showing you the uh, trail of Lewis and Clark, and then when they came back. So that's kind of nice, right? We did get Florida from the Spanish in 1819. We did this via a treaty. So the name of the treaty is called the adams onyas Treaty, 1819. And the territory was acquired once again by treaty from the Spanish. So when you take again a look at the map, this right here, 1819, 1819, this little piece of land right here was acquired from the Spanish through the adams onyas Treaty. So this is the original 13. We buy this from the French. We get this guy from the Spanish. And America is growing. You can say it again. Manifest destiny. This is the tougher story in here. There's a lot going on with Texas. So as we begin to explore that, you'll see that. Southern slave owners and other American settlers are moving into Texas really early on. After Mexico declared their independence from Spain, 1821. The Mexican government kind of allowed them to come in, so people came, right? In 1836, though, though there, was, there were so many of them, there was 30,000 of them, those settlers declared their independence from Mexico. For a very short time period, the Republic of Texas was its own country. For nine years, Texas had its own country. Texas then said, hey, we came from America. We might as well be part of America. They requested admission to the United States. But the major controversy was, if we admit Texas, will it be a slave state or a free state? And we have to figure that out, right? It's not going to be easy. So when you look at Texas, here is what was annexed or, or taken. They declared their independence, the Republic of Texas. And the Texans basically had their own country for nine years. Then... Uh, when, when Texas is annexed in 1845 by the United States, we get in this little battle with the Mexicans over how much of Texas we took. And, and the issue here was we pretty much claimed that we took all of Texas. So this is the disputed territory. We said we took this piece and all of this piece and up to the Rio Grande. We took it all. And the Mexican government kind of said, no, you didn't. You only got the amount of land up to the Nueces River right here. So this is really all you took. And, of course, Americans, we said, we, no, no, we took it all. We end up fighting a war 
against Mexico. And the dispute was how much land we actually took. And after three short years, we're going to win that war and we're going to get a whole boatload more of land. So basically, just check this out. This is all Mexico over here in the 1830s. It will not be in 1848, okay? Uh, but as we begin to, to take Texas, we also wanted some land up north. So we acquire from Great Britain in a compromise a piece of the Oregon Territory, a piece that, that landed or continued all the way up to the 49th parallel, all the way to the coast. Except Americans were mad at our president, James K. Pope, because Americans said, well, we wanted not just a piece of the Oregon country, but we wanted all of it. So the slogan at that time is going to be 54-40 or fight. And that slogan or that, that line refers to the, the highest point of the Oregon Territory. So when you look at the map here, this really, this green and this orange, that was the Oregon Territory. We organize a treaty with the British where we just take this line that was already established here and just continue it all the way across and underneath Vancouver Island. So we basically got this piece of Oregon. Everybody should have been happy. But why were they not? Because Americans wanted the whole thing. So this piece that we gave to Great Britain, most Americans want it because of Manifest Destiny. Any more land is great. So the slogan, once again, was what? They wanted all of Oregon. If you go from the 42nd uh, parallel all the way up to the 5440 line, they wanted all of this or they were willing to go to war. So the slogan was what? 5440 or fight. You got it. You're thinking about it. But realize we, didn't get, we did not get it all. James K. Pope did not get it all. In 1848, after we win the Mexican War, we gain a piece of land known as the Mexican Cession. So Mexico ceded land to us. So what land? Well, the land that is now California, Nevada, Utah, Arizona, some parts of New Mexico, Colorado, and Wyoming. Those all became part of the United States because of the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo, which happened at the end of the Mexican War. Once again, the Mexican War started in 1846, ends in 1848. So pretty much you're looking at a two to three year war, right? So if you want to see the Mexican section, it's a pretty big piece. So we, we, we annexed this in 1845, then we fought the World War until 1848, and because of that war, we, we definitely got the rest of Texas, all the way up to the Rio Grande. And then we get this other piece. So this is the territory that is ceded by Mexico. On some maps, you might see it say the Mexican Cession. So we got all this land in 1848. We did give Mexico $15 million. We're like, we're sorry. We, we, we beat you. We won that war. But we're, we're, we're going to take this land. Okay. Uh, we'll give you $15 million for it. And it worked out for us because we never actually fought Mexico again. So it kind of worked out for us. The last little piece you need to be worried about is this little guy down here, the Gadsden Purchase 1853. So when you're looking at it, obviously it used to be part of Mexico. How did we get it? Why did we get it? It's pretty easy, right? We purchased that from the, from the Mexicans uh, as a possible route to build a railroad. We needed a more flat road to build our railroads, right? When you look at it, we couldn't really build a railroad straight through in the 1850s because of the, the Sierra Nevada and the Rocky Mountains. So we figured we bought this land, we can, we can send a little continental railroad over here and then scoot it down here, build a railroad down here and get to California and then come back through this railroad. So we bought it to build a railroad. Uh, it cost us $10 million and it just included a little land south of Arizona and New Mexico. Uh, and that's pretty much the last piece of mainland America that, that we've created. And what I've done for you here is I'm just kind of showing you where the gas and purchase is, all right? Southern Arizona and New Mexico, and that's to build that river. Uh, if you ever get a chance to go to the Gila River, you could uh, you could kayak that or, you know, you could have some fun with that, the Gila River. So what I'd like you to do, if you can uh, to finish off is go back to that first slide or go back to the beginning of the presentation and what you're going to do is you're going to take a look at that map and the exercise here is just label the map with the name of the acquisition of land and the date it was added to the United States. And if you color it, I'll give you a little extra credit or whatever. So go to that first slide there or go to the beginning of the presentation, pause the screen if you need it, and there you go. You're in business. You can, you can basically color code that whole thing, label it, and tell me how we got it. So you're in business, right? We look forward to seeing you again, and I hope this helped you out. Thanks.